This is Neil Patwari. In this segment, we're going to talk about differential coding, and in particular for BPSK, although differential coding is used in all sorts of phase shift keying systems. The idea is that you're using a sinusoid as part of your orthogonal waveforms. Your receiver has to learn the phase and match the phase of the received signal. Sometimes that's just incredibly hard. There's no way to tell whether your phase is correct or whether it's off by 180 degrees. In BPSK, we have one waveform, it's V0, and it has a cosine at some carrier frequency. And we're either sending this symbol A0, which is um, a positive one, or A1, which is a negative one. And being off by a phase of 180 degrees would make your symbol incorrect. And if you synchronize to this cosine at the receiver in a way that is off by 180 degrees, then every bit is going to be the incorrect bit. BPSK systems can be very fragile to phase synchronization. One of the ways that they use to solve this is using differential coding. Differential coding goes as follows. So let's say I want to send some bits, and right now I'm just going to make up some bits to, uh, to get us started. Okay, so instead of sending that raw bit stream, sending A0, sorry, sending uh, A1, and then A1, and then A0, and then A0, and then A1 again, instead of doing that, what I'm going to do is what's called differential coding, where I start with some assumption for k of 0. This is kind of an implicit uh, extra bit that I send. And the transmitter and receiver kind of just agree what that bit is going to be beforehand. So let's say that bit is going to be a 0. Then what we're going to do is we're going to have this rule at the transmitter that says that kn um, is going to be one of two things. First, if I want to send a zero, that is bn is equal to zero, I'm going to send the same thing I sent last time. The, what I sent last time, if time is n, then I'm going to send kn minus one. And if I want to send a one, instead of sending the same thing, I'm going to send the opposite. Um, people might refer to this as kn minus one prime, but since I'm sending zeros and ones here, I can just do one minus kn minus one. So now what I want to send at time one, well, I want to send a one. So I look in the second row here. It says send the opposite of what my previous bit was. That previous bit was a zero. So this time I'm going to send a one. At time two, I also want to send a one. Again, I look at the second row here. And that says, take the opposite of what I sent the last time. So previously I sent a 1, so now I'm going to send a, send a 0. Then at time 3, I want to send a 0. So instead of looking at this bottom row, I'm going to look at the top row, and I'm going to say, OK, we'll just send the same thing I sent the last time, and so on. Um, here I want to send at bit 6, I want to send a 0, so I send the same thing I did the last time. Bit 7, I want to send a 1, so I take the opposite, take the opposite, take the opposite. Okay, so now my encoded bit stream is this. This uh, kn represents the encoded bits. And I could even be more specific and say differentially encoded. And so now what I'm going to do is instead of sending these nine bits, I'm actually going to send these uh, 10 bits, the extra one being the one that, that the protocol says we send as a zero. And at my receiver, oh, sorry, at my transmitter, it is actually producing an angle. So when I say a zero, it's producing an angle of uh, zero, zero radians. And this is pi radians. And to send a zero, so that's zero radians. And zero, zero. And I send the symbol 
that is specified by the BPSK protocol, but um, um, I'm using KN, not the original bits BN. Okay, so now what happens at the receiver? The differential receiver is going to do a differential decoding operation. And that is that it's going to take the angle of each uh, received vector that it receives, so uh, this V0, and it's going to look at the angle between uh, the phases. The, the actual operation of the receiver, it's going to correlate with the cosine um, at the frequency, and it's going to correlate with the sine at the frequency. And what it's going to do is it's going to compute the angle out of this with the inverse tangent function. Um, that's going to give us the angle, and we're going to call this angle uh, angle A. And so that's, if it uh, is perfectly synchronized, it's going to get at the receiver this, this row plus some noise. And what it's going to do with that is it's going to look at uh, this, the current angle versus the previous angle. So let's say the current angle is angle A, K, and it's going to look at the previous angle, angle K minus 1. And what it's going to do is it's going to look at whether this difference is small or large. And what the, uh, the standard way to describe this is, as we're talking about angles, let's take the cosine of the difference in angles. And a cosine function, because the cosine function looks like this, um, where this is pi over 2, and uh, I didn't do a great job of drawing this, but uh, etc. Small differences in angle will give us a positive number. Uh, big difference in angle will give us a negative number. So if this is greater than 0, then I'm going to say that the two angles were close together. And that means very likely that bn of 0 was sent. And if it's less than 0, then I was probably changing the phases between the bits and bn should be estimated to be 1. Okay, so let's look at what would happen here with this as my decision. So let me uh, try to highlight this decision that I'm making. And so I'm going to look at bn. And the first time I make a bit decision is at time 1. And I look at this phase, pi minus 0. That gives me an angle of pi, and the cosine of pi is negative, so I'm going to get a 1. Obviously, I wouldn't receive exactly 0 and exactly pi. I'd get some angle that had some noise in it, but because my estimate here is pi, in this case, even if it was a little bit on either side of pi, I would still get a negative cosine, and I would still then decide that the my estimate of the bit was 1, and so on. So the next time 2, I'm going to look at 0 minus pi. I'm going to get negative pi. It's going to be a negative value out of the cosine, and so I'm going to decide bit 1. And then next time, when I time 3, I have two bits that are the same. I'm going to decide 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. Okay, and you can see that what I've decided matches what bits were sent. Okay, now let's say that actually my receiver didn't synchronize correctly. It synchronized to the opposite phase. So in this case, um, let's say this is the problem we're trying to deal with.
The problem now is that uh, angle A is first pi and then zero. I'm going to basically flip all of these angles and I'm going to see what happens at the receiver to the bit decisions. Okay, so my bit decisions now, I start at 1 again. I look at 0 minus pi, it's negative pi. This is over here. It becomes a negative cosine, and so I estimate a 1. Again, I estimate a 1, and then because these phases are the same, I get a 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. Even though I have been... Uh, completely wrong about my phase at the receiver. That is, I made the opposite phase decision. My receiver synchronized to the wrong phase. My bit decisions come out exactly correct. Now, the negative is this column 0. This is an extra bit. Um, and I have to send that bit. The other problem is that the probability of error changes. Okay, and the probability of bit error in this case um, I could say bit error like I'm doing here. It's the same as the symbol error or just probability of error. For differential BPSK, uh, this is one half EXP of the minus sign of the EB over N naught ratio. And see, just like the, the non-coherent FSK, where we had to deal with the, um, a non-coherency in the receiver, I ended up with an exponential for D differential BPSK, or just DPSK, we end up with this expression for the probability of error.